We then reached Bicholi. In Bicholi, next to Hira Tokis, there is a road that goes towards the west, and that leads to a village called as Lamgaon. Now, in Lamgaon, we found that there was a board which told us that there were caves over there. One thing about Lamgaon is this name has come because they say or legend tells us. that there were lot of buddhist and jains staying over here locally they were called as lamas and hence this entire village was known as lam gaon or lamazo gaon from this another konkani word also has uh, been included in the vocabulary is the word shivrak the reason is that this buddhist students who were there were called as shravaks they were used to begging for their food from the people and they were vegetarian so any person eating vegetarian food was called as a shravak which later degenerated to shivrak that is how we call vegetarians in our local language so we walked down and we found a pathway uh where there was a spring people were washing their clothes and a small pathway through the betel nut plantation led to a rock cut cave a single rock cut cave where outside we saw that there were idols of horses when we went in we found that there was one compartment having two pillars and a huge ling we could see over there then i was told by mr prithviraj sardesai who was accompanying us that there was another cave ahead we walked down around 15 meters and came across a pathway which looked a little hidden now when we see the close up of this pathway you can see that it is covered up with bushes and when we went up there we found that there was a carved cave over there but not completed now you can see over here that there is a snake skin what we must know is that this caves since there are no not many people who come over here has become an habitat for snakes and for leopards if you look here you can see that there is a pillar that has been half carved and the ceiling shows carvings in this uh, cave there are a lot of bats the whole area smells of sulfur these are the bat droppings they are very poisonous you have to be very very careful so next time you come here to the lamgaon caves please make sure that there is no leopard or snakes in here and travel in groups please do not go alone inside these caves so this is our visit to the lamgaon caves ami khanepar gawan eka jagyacher aila ja jagyacher pandavanche hori nale pandavanche guha असे जाग्याचेर तुमका हंगा सकल दिष्टी पडटले की खांड्यापार रिवर दिष्टी पडटा हंगासून ट्रेडिंग खूप जाताले आम्ही हंगा आयल्यात पळोपाक ह्यो केव्स ह्यो केव्स विच आर डेटिंग बॅक टू द बुद्धिस्ट इरा ओवर हियर अँड एट वन टाइम दे वर टोटली कवर्ड विथ मड दॅट इज अ नाईस स्टोरी वी विल गो डाऊन अँड वी विल see that but this entire area was covered up with mud and this was excavated by the archaeological survey of india they are unique over here a few caves are like this which are standing individually and we shall go down and see the architecture of this caves from this angle you will see that there are not just one cave but there is 
one complex here a set of two caves complex over there and there is one more small freestanding cave over here this particular small cave that you see behind me was a small shrine where we can see a ling while this could have been for the staying of those people it has got a very unique structure it has got a room in front and it has got a room behind same thing there it has got a room in front and a room behind it has got niches it has got carvings on the ceiling and you will find that they had made provision to store rain water over there outside so we will go down and see this in close up but before we go on this close up on top over there on top on the shikara is a carved a uh, pot or a kalash we cannot see it now because of the grass that has grown there and you will notice that even the caves are in a very bad shape they need to be visited they need to be taken care of they need to be protected preserved and promoted to those lakhs of tourists who come into goa where we can show them our beautiful heritage तुमका दिसले की हाव या केविन एका हुमराजेर बसला नाउ दिस इज बिटवीन द आउटर रूम एंड द इनर रूम द इनर रूम यू विल सी सम निशीज ओवर देयर तका आमी कोकणीन कुरकुट म्हणता तसे हांगा असा बाहेरवी असा कुरकुट म्हणता पहिलीच्या तेपार लाइट नशिली इलेक्ट्रिसिटी नशिली सो दे वुड पुट अ ऑइल लॅम्प इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर वन ऑर दे वुड स्टोर समथिंग अप देयर but what i want you to notice in this particular cave is a nice phenomenon in the caves they already had beautiful designs up there this is the outer uh, room and also in the inner room but the water that seeps from top it falls down and it has created a similar design down in the mud on the ground we can see that even nature acts like an interior designer on its own it makes its own designs it is the young generation that has to come be one with nature and learn how to take this forward for the benefit of the people and the benefit of the state by observing this and bringing it into the culture that they have been brought up
ladies and gentlemen we have come almost about 60 to 65 kilometers from panjim walking through heat the summer heat almost about trailing down almost about half a kilometer and we have come to bring to you on prime tv and go goa no goa something that is dated to 65 million years ago this village of khotode is located in the satari taluka it's about 60 miles from panjim and about 6 kilometers from the town of warpai in fact from this village passes the river madai and the fossil zone is located on the left bank of this river in fact we would not have known about this uh, particular forest and a hint of this fossilized treasure was actually found in a research paper on prehistoric monument of the western coast of india by c marchesetti on 8th april 1876 when he mentioned and i quote a petrified forest extended over a surface of several miles in khotode village goa scattered over the adjoining hill and partly in the village bordering the river running along its base our friend mr varad sabnis a goan archaeologist led a team of archaeological researchers and also accompanied by goan environmentalist mr rajendra kirkar to this village but what happens during the monsoons is that the river level rises and the water gushing down from the mountain ranges it submerges all these flora fossil stones when we went there we found only about a small area of around 10 to 15 square meters which had exposed this flora but going to this place was very very taxing we had to walk and walk and walk and walk we had to go through bushes we had to go through fields and we could reach there only after about 20 to 25 minutes of walking through harsh terrain now you have to be very very careful when you are walking to these places and there can be uh, animals there can be other uh, snakes that can uh, attack you but it is most important that the educational institutions in goa must take their students and show them this area as study of this can let us know how the hominids worked walked over here the vegetation that existed during that period and the climatic conditions that were prevalent and if you are lucky you may come across the stone age tools that were used by these hominids so let us meet our friend who has brought us here to the fossilized forest of khotode varad bab welcome to this program prime tv go goa no goa which travels to different parts of goa and we try to bring some unknown important facets about goa and its archaeology and heritage to the people thank you very much for joining us here on this program and uh, what we want to ask you is there how did you find this particular place because it's very remotely located and uh, i find that if i had to come alone i would never be able to find this place uh, similar was the case when i tried to locate this because uh, i was part of one research team and it was a project at asiatic society mumbai and there i came across one article of 19th century mentioning about existence of such fossil forest in area called farm of captain pinto and that's all it was mentioned and the village name khotode was mentioned and then i started searching for it i came across few people who already were knowing about the reference but they could not locate the exact place i uh, contacted mr rajendra kerkar who is well versed about 
the geography of Goa. So I, with the help of Dr. Mr. Rajendra Kerkar, I came to this particular place, and uh, we could locate. We collected some samples, got it confirmed with uh, well-known geologists and paleontologists, and then only be officially declared through newspapers and research articles about this place. Uh, you find that this particular place, if it comes to promotion of tourism or retaining this particular way, because coming over here, we found that there were no directions, there was nothing over here. Uh, do you find that it is an advantage that it is not known to other people, or do you feel that this should be developed and promoted to all the, especially the visitors, especially the student community who are in botany, who go out of the state? To learn about botany, do you feel that they uh, they should be brought over here and thought about this? Uh, see this particular uh, place, which has got fossils which are more than 65 million years old, so it has already gone out of public memory. So even villagers are not aware about any such thing present over here. Uh, basic awareness is very much needed, and especially among the ge geology students, uh, botany students from uh, different colleges and university. Uh, these things are to be promoted and through education, uh, tourism can be promoted over here. Uh, so you feel that the local parties that are there, the owners of the places, the village panchayas that are here, uh, they could um, develop this area and make a little bit of revenue for their uh, organization? Yes, of course, this can be uh, made through local panchayat. Even uh, as a state government, state should look into this because this is the earliest evidence of life not only in Goa but in coastal India. So it has got a lot of academic significance, historical significance. So it can be uh, made as a tourist destination as well as it can be converted into geological fossil park as well which are hardly seven or eight in the entire Indian subcontinent. Okay. Uh, in fact, I am really inspired by the words by Varad Bab because it was because of him that I am sitting on a 65 million year old fossilized forest part. If we look around this particular river, it's quite, we are sitting inside, we have taken the risk of sitting inside, but we have brought this program to you now because in the first monsoons, when this river waters become high, you cannot see anything over here. You cannot come over here. Now that he, uh, Mr. Varad Bab has told us that uh, this has to be protected. Uh, what comes to my mind is that it can be protected on site as well as as a teaser, as an uh, as, uh, example so that it can inspire other people to come. Whether we should pick up a piece from here, I mean the museum or some other place, place it over there so that people can come, confirm for themselves, yes, that is the place and they can come over here. Do you feel that lifting a piece from here and keeping it in the museum is going to um, give a little bit of boost for people to come over here? Uh, I will not support lifting from here, but if it is by a museum or any academic institute, then of course it should be uh, suggested to such uh, institutions because that will help uh, people who cannot reach up to here. And basic awareness will also be created so that people will come to know that Goa, when it comes to geography or geology, has got a history of more than 65 million years. Uh, this is an off question to you. This where we are seeing right now, where we are sitting over here in Khatarde village, uh, village of Sattari, uh, this is 65 million years. Is there anything here in Goa that is more than 65 million years old? Uh, of course, the earliest evidence of land or rock formation in entire Indian subcontinent dates back to 3,500 million years before present. And we have Goa is very fortunate to have two locations which are known where we find these oldest rocks. Where are these? Uh, these are one location is Anmod Ghat and the other location is Palolem Beach. Okay. And these are things that people can go see and enjoy this uh, enjoy this uh, places. Sorry, when we are sitting down here, these fishes are taking bites. They are nibbling the feet. So this is one added advantage of getting my uh, feet 
cleaned by this which i would have paid a bomb if i had to go to any of the star hotels to get fish pedicure this is just an incentive for you to please come to the different villages that we have especially khotode village dip your leg into this rivers and allow the small small fishes to clean up your feet the dry skin of your feet and all this topped by very rich heritage that we have you can see beautiful ferns and quite a lot of thing because you will not be able to see this when the monsoon waters make this river rise you will not be able to come here at all so here we are at khotode in the midst of the 65 million year old fossilized forest which is the earliest evidence of life in goa thanks to our friend mr varad sabnis thank you varad bab thank you uh, best wishes to prime tv When one visits the famed and pristine Palole beach with its white sands at the southernmost end of Goan shores you may inadvertently lay your eyes and may be a few privileged to lay their hands on a heritage which is as old as 3500 million years old this heritage is present in the form of huge smooth surface rocks jutting out skyward along the wave kissed shoreline of this beach these rocks have been witness to the formation of life on earth as they are formed when no life existed on this planet they comprise the base rock of all other rocks on the indian subcontinent geologically these rocks are identified as Troniamite gneiss Besides here you can find such rocks at Anmod Ghat in the Sayadri range towards the eastern border of Goa These rocks are geologically aged to a period around 3500 million years by the rubidium isotope dating method the second oldest rocks on the indian subcontinent are found in karnataka and which are dated to 3200 million years old one of goa's noted writer and botanist dr nandkumar kamat from the department of botany goa university once stated and i quote when the indian supercontinent pangaea broke up and the indian landmass started to drift towards the northeast the oldest of the stones or rocks remained on the part of that landmass which comprises goa and he further stated when you touch this rock you are touching part of history which is dated 3500 million years old so ladies and gentlemen when you come to palolem beach please do not look only at the beach side and the waves which are wonderful but please take time off to touch those huge boulders because what you will be doing is you will be touching 3500 million years old of history and heritage thank you for watching go goa no goa as we travel all over goa to get you the news of those 
very unheard and unseen of things or lesser known things we may be making mistakes you may be wanting to know something more please send us your feedback on the email and whatsapp that is flashing on your uh, tv thank you so much for watching go goa no goa till we meet again